What's up everyone, China Cycling here. Uh, you guys know me, I love making cycling films, I love making videos. So when I see a new piece of tech that lets me get some new interesting shots, something to add into my videos, I'm all about it. So I was super pumped when Feiyu reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out their new Pocket 3 gimbal. Uh, it has some interesting features that you don't find on other Pocket gimbals, so uh, let's check it out. Now I do want to say thank you for Feiyu for sponsoring this video, but whenever a video is sponsored I like to give something back to you guys, so I asked them if they could give us an extra one that we're going to give away as a prize. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can win one of these in a giveaway. So this kind of style of like handheld gimbal was kind of made popular by the DJI Osmo Pocket. Uh, I did a review on that back in the day like 3 or 4 years ago. I think this style of camera is great for cyclists because it fits in your jersey pocket easy but gets you super super silky smooth footage. If you're riding along and you want some ride by footage of one of your friends, this is the best thing. But the killer feature that stood out on this one to me is the fact that so the handle and the head can separate but they're still connected wirelessly. So here I can still turn around this head and control the head of the Kimball with uh, the control in my hand and I can see what it sees. So that allows me to put this head anywhere and then still get shots. So obviously I could have this underneath me on the bottom of my saddle looking backwards and then either have this in my hand or mounted on the bike because it's got a thread in there and I can start and stop recording. I can see what's recording. I can change the angle a bit. If the guy's a bit closer and I need to look up a bit, I can do all that with this. And then the bottom of this is actually magnetic so you can't see this but on my table, Boom, I can just stick it on the table. So stick it on the car bonnet, stick it anywhere. So imagine uh, you stick this on the car bonnet behind you or in front of you on the back of the trunk uh, and you just tell whoever's with you, just drive, I'll do the rest. And then you can set up the shots with this, you can press record, all that stuff. So that's a super killer feature in my opinion that you don't find on the Osmo Pocket and stuff. Uh, so yeah, this cool little screen to control it, but it can also be separated. And then to put it back together, we just kind of slide it on here. And uh, the little handle screen also doubles as a second battery. So there's a battery built into the head and then there's a battery built into this handle thing here. So this also works to charge the main thing. So that gives you a bit of extra battery life as well. Uh, so there's two kind of main ways that I like to use it. So usually uh, I'll have it on the, the, the stick, on the handle in my pocket for like getting riding and lung shots of my friends riding and stuff too. But the other way I like to use it is so I like to mount one on a chest mount and then that's the this is the one here that I usually mount on the chest mount so I don't bother with the handle for this it's just the head and I put an I put an ND filter on it as well and that lets me slow the shutter speed down and get some nice motion blur. Gonna geek out a bit here basically usual action cameras that don't have gimbals they were getting really good at stabilization these days. But one thing they can't do is good stabilization with slow shutter speeds. Because basically what they're doing is cropping into the image and as the camera moves around, they're moving around to compensate. But if the camera is moving around with a, slow, with a slow shutter speed, you'll get motion blur going in like all weird directions. And as the picture is panning around, it will look like junk. But if you have something on a gimbal, you can put an ND filter on it slow the shutter speed down and then you get that real native motion blur in camera. So I put this on my chest, when I'm going down a hill uh, I can get some cool motion blur in the shot. Uh, I don't think there's official supported ND filters out for this yet uh, but I found some for another camera that works just fine and they kind of just stick on there and that's that. So like I say this is the one that goes on my chest cam or I mount it to the bike directly or mount it you know anywhere. Obviously it's a really small shape and it's magnetic you can put it anywhere you want and then I keep this one in my pocket with the handle uh, attached to the head just to get some b-roll footage. Obviously I don't suggest you buy two, you can just buy one because it can double as both but I'm just showing you how I use it. Uh, talking about specs of the camera, uh, so it can do 4K at 60 frames a sec. I like to shoot everything at 24 frames a sec because I'm a film nerd, so that's easy for it to handle. Uh, it can also do 1080p at 120 frames a second, which means you can slow it down in post and get that super slow-mo stuff. 
which is really cool with the gimbal because you can get some, you can be on gravel like on a really, really bouncy road and you can get slow mo and the guy going over the ruts and stuff will look really, really cool, but it will be silky, silky smooth footage. So that's always a cool little uh, trick to get in the shots. As far as the lens goes, it's the equivalent of a 16 degree, so a pretty wide angle lens. Uh, obviously with the 4K you can crop into that a bit if you want a bit of a tighter shot but I don't recommend cropping in too much because obviously the image will start to fall apart. Uh, the sensor in here is not the biggest sensor in the world, we've got about a half an inch sensor uh, which means it's fine in bright lights which is usually we're going to be using it anyway but if it does get dark I've noticed the image quality can't quite keep up and that's just because the limit of the sensor size. Uh, picture quality, you guys can be the judge. As I say, something like the DJI uh, Osmo Pocket 3 that just came out, I don't think it can go toe to toe with that in terms of picture quality, but I think it's almost like half the price or something. And also it has the trick of being separable into two pieces, so not really a like for like comparison. Uh, if you don't wanna buy the handle, you can actually just buy the head itself and you can control the head with the app on the phone. The app on the phone is great, you can control the gimbal, change all the things really quick, all that stuff. Um, obviously, if you've got the handle on there, you can still connect with the app as well. It's not an either or thing. In terms of storage, we're just taking micro SD cards. So obviously that's super convenient for uh, swapping them out and uh, dumping footage onto your computer and stuff. In terms of accessories, uh, there are several official accessories that Feiyu do. Uh, but also on the bottom of this handle here, you have this um, standard uh, threaded adapter. So obviously you can then put on a GoPro style adapter or anything you want like that. There's also the adapter for just the head, so you can mount the head onto a GoPro style mount too. So then, you know, helmet cams, chest cams, anything the world is your oyster. Uh, one weird quirk of the camera, so this design is really nice, like this whole L-shaped thing we've got going on, because in your hand it's really comfortable. Uh, it kind of like rests on your hand naturally, and then, you know, especially when it's going in and out your jersey pocket, I like that extra stability. But then the weird thing about this shape is that the center of gravity is off, so it won't stand up on its own. You can lie it down like this, it's not a problem, but obviously if you wanna get shots of stuff, then you need to take the head off and just put that on the table instead. So not a deal breaker, but for me, it's just really one of those things that's really weird to see something like this that just can't stand up. Another quirk is the slide for sliding this on. So as it slides in, this USB-C goes into this port here and you have to be pretty careful not to bend it. So again, I wouldn't do this like, you know, while riding the bike non-handling and stuff, but okay. Yeah, so now we're in properly. Uh, so yeah, be careful when you're putting on and off the mount, uh, but once it's on, it's not coming off. Uh, so for me, just because I like it to be able to stand up, I also put on this little extra tripod on here and then that just lets me have a solution where I can always have it if I want to stand it up on a table or whatever, it can. Um, and then obviously it also gets a bit more reach, so if you want to do some selfie stuff, again, the legs on this tripod can come out as well to get some even more reach. So if you want it in selfie mode, you can do your vlogging or whatever like this. So. Uh, this is not a Feiyu accessory, this is one of my own accessories, but yeah, there's plenty of people who make small tripods like this. Uh, it's something I'd recommend if you're gonna get this camera. Uh, speaking of vlogging, so it makes a good vlogging camera. There's also an official like extender stick as well if you don't wanna use this setup to get the camera further away. So you know, you can get a nice shot of you and the surroundings. But its biggest downfall as a vlogging camera is probably the microphone setup. So the microphones, they're not bad, they're a little bit tinny, but they don't deal with wind so well. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is uh, 3.45 in the morning, early start today. 20 k's in, coming into the first town. For the record, I have a light. Uh, now, lots of action cameras, lots of cameras these days, they say they have wind reduction technology, you know, powered by AI and blah, blah, blah. In my opinion, none of them really work. Uh, Feiyu don't make any claims to have wind reduction, I think, and it just doesn't, like none of them do. Um, so just beware, if you're using it outside in windy places, you, your audio is gonna suffer. So have an external mic maybe with a dead cat on it or anything like that, or just, you know, record B-roll outside and then dub over it. But uh, not ideal if you're vlogging, obviously, but for me, the main purpose of this camera is to get B-roll footage of other people riding along and then also get the silky smooth footage of me riding down a descent or whatever. 
Make sure you stay to the end of the video and I'll show you how you can win one of these. And now pricing wise, so pricing isn't something I like to talk about about this time of year because it's coming up to Black Friday and prices go crazy and what you hear me say now may not be what it's like when you go into the shop. So I'll put some links down below for you to check out the prices, but I think the regular price is around uh, under $350 for the handle and the head. And I think the retail price for the new DJI Osmo Pocket is like $670. So around 60-ish percent of the price of the DJI if my maths is right. So again, you get a lot better value for money, a lot more bang for your buck. Uh, I've not used the Osmo Pocket 3, but from what I've seen, the image quality does look superior. So it's going to matter how much does image quality matter to you and how much do you like the head being separable on this. But if you're after a more budget option and China cycling fans, we like the budget options. Uh, I think the Feiyu Pocket 3 is a great alternative. Uh, there will be a discount code. I think the discount code is just Joe and that'll get you 10% off at the regular price. But like I say, I think there's gonna be some sales coming up, up and stuff. So you might be better off just using the sale price and not my discount code. But links in the description. I think the price is gonna be changing all the time because it's Black Friday, it's Cyber Monday. But you guys check it out in the description and uh, yeah, get the best deal you can. So let's talk about the pros and the cons, kind of sum it up here. Uh, the pros, I think, is you can get a variety of shots, right? So you can mount this magnetically in a whole bunch of places and you don't have to worry about stabilization and you don't worry have to worry about reframing, yeah? So if I put this on the back of the car and then I want to get a, car, a shot from the left of the car or the right of the car, I can use a remote to reframe. Whereas if it was a traditional GoPro, I'd have to stop the car, tell them to stop, I have to reposition the camera and then go again. So that's a kind of killer feature advantage of this that you can't do with a traditional action camera. Uh, another advantage I'd say is just how easy it is to operate, especially with the handle. Uh, you can change all the settings on the screen, uh, flick through all the modes, and then you know the little joystick to change the gimbal head, uh, flip it through to selfie mode, through the forwards mode. Super easy to operate. Uh, one button to go, one button to stop. And that's one thing I really like about these cameras in general, like so either the DJI Osmo Pockets or this, is that if you're going out to get some footage with someone who isn't a camera person, you know, they maybe don't have very steady hands and stuff, all you have to do is tell them, press this button, point at me, and then you get some really cool footage. So some of the footage I'll put in here of me riding was shot by Tom, and uh, Tom, you know, he occasionally sh shoots stuff for me, but he's not a professional cameraman by any means, but you just put this in his hand, press him, tell him to press record, and uh, you can get some really cool shots. Uh, one other thing I found with this, I found myself using it as like a life style camera as well like just taking it around with the kids take take it to a few theme parks and stuff like uh it's really nice to hold in the hand when you're holding an action camera you find yourself doing this pose a lot and it always feels a bit weird just walking around like pointing the action camera like this whereas holding this in your hand like it just feels a lot more natural you can have it down by your waist and you can aim the head up and stuff so i find myself using it as like a lifestyle camera quite a lot too uh yeah the final advantage is what I alluded to earlier, is that if you are into your in-camera motion blur, you can put an ND on there, slow the shutter speed down, and then get still silky smooth footage while you have the slow shutter speed. So that might not be a thing for everyone. You can always add motion blur in post, but in my opinion, it never looks the same, and it does take quite a lot of computer power too. So if you can get it in camera, get it in camera. Uh, now, everything has disadvantages. If I was talking about the disadvantages of this, I'd say image quality is good, but it's not amazing. Uh, obviously, we just talked about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. The image quality on that looks a bit of a step above this. Obviously, it has a bigger sensor. And then some of the newer, later um, action cameras. So I have the DJ Action 4. Review of that will be coming on the channel later. And that also has the bigger sensor, and you get a slightly better image quality. But obviously, they have to fit the sensor into this tiny head, so you're never going to have that big of an image sensor. So image quality, you guys judge for yourself. If you're watching this video on a phone, it might look fine. But if you're going to be shooting the things that are going to blow up on a huge 4K 50-inch TV, then you might be starting to tell the difference there. But I think image quality on this is about the same as what you get out of a cell phone, like an iPhone 14 or something. Uh, so yeah, it's just going to depend on how high the bar is for you in terms of image quality. Uh, one other disadvantage, I'd say the app can sometimes be a bit finicky to connect. Uh, it might be a me thing because I have a VPN on my phone because of where I live. But yeah, sometimes the app is a bit finicky to connect and stuff. But uh, in general, it wasn't too bad. Like I'm really nitpicking that that's the worst thing I can find about it. Uh, should you buy it though? That's the ultimate question. Uh, it's going to depend, right? So there are so many choices of cameras now to capture stuff on your bike rides. It's getting crazy, you know? Uh, I love them all because, you know, my job is making videos, but 
for most people, you know, you can only afford to have one. Now, one advantage I'd say about this style of camera is it's totally different to your phone, right? So I think your phone and an action camera have lots of overlap in terms of, you know, the shots you can get with them. Whereas the shots that this can give you are stuff that you can't get on your phone, right? Your phone doesn't have a gimbal unless you have one of those massive gimbals. Uh, and your phone, you know, you can't put it on the back of a car with a magnet and get a shot of yourself. So I'd say this can get you shots that your phone can't get you. And uh, yeah, if that's something that you're going to be after, I definitely think it's an option. But if you just want something to stick on the front of your bike underneath your GoPro to record like one hour crits, then this is probably not the one for you. You'd probably be better off with a Insta360 action camera or the DJI action cameras. But if you want a nice variety of shots and your stabilization is important to you, I definitely say the Feiyu 3 is a great option. Like I say, the price is definitely a price to win. And uh, yeah, you guys check it out. Uh, yeah, so as I said at the beginning, go gonna do a giveaway with Feiyu. Uh, it's gonna keep it si super simple. You guys in the comments down below, uh, let me know why you need it. What do you want to shoot it for? Uh, why should you win? We'll keep it super simple, like uh, no random draws or anything. You guys just tell me, I'll go through them, and uh, whoever I think sounds the most deserving, uh, I'll send one your way, so check it out. So that's almost the end of the video. Uh, thank you for reaching out, Feiyu. I've liked using this. I'm gonna keep using it going forward. I've got a bunch of videos dropping soon that use footage shot on this, including a review of this, the Trigon. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. When that comes out, that should be dropping in the next few days too. And uh, yeah, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let me know in the comments down below why you should win one. And uh, that's it from me. China Cycling, out.